Okay, now that you've learned all these interesting things about layers, I'm gonna show you how to create tennis advertisement that looks like this. So in Bridge, you have some options. I can select this image, double click it. It's gonna open in Photoshop. I can come back down to Bridge, double click this image because it too is gonna open in Photoshop. And then I've gotta get this image over to the other one. A lot of ways to do it. For those of you that think, okay, I would just select all by hitting Command A, and then I would go over to Edit Copy or Command or Control C. And then I would go back to this image by clicking on the tab. Because remember, you can toggle between open images by clicking on the tabs. Come over here and hit Command or Control V or go down to Edit and Paste. Okay, now I need to resize it. So now I've got to go up to edit and resize, but I don't know exactly how big to make it. So, and then I think, well, actually I, I put the wrong one in the wrong image. So let me delete that. I really wanted to select all of this, command or control A. I wanted command or control C, down to edit copy, come back to this image. And I really wanted to paste that image into this one because this is the background image. So I go up to edit and paste. Okay, now it's too big. So now I've got to go up to edit and transform, which you've already learned how to do, and leave it on scale. And I need to drag it, move it, drag it, move it, drag it, move it, lock it down, and I can now manipulate it. Do you see how many steps that took? I mean, you can get there. One thing, when you copy and paste from one image into the other, this is a, a big file. How big is that file? That's a 71 meg file. Photoshop saves the last 50 things you did. So that means a 71 meg file has been copied into my RAM, onto my clipboard, and it's wasting my, my, my RAM. If you do this a lot, like you work on 10 images and you copy 10 things in 10 images, so now you have your RAM clogged down with all this copied stuff that doesn't need to be there, right? Wait, there's a bonus tip. Yes! If you ever do notice your Photoshop acting slow or, or something, just go up to edit and go down to purge and choose all. Basically that's gonna throw away all your clipboard stuff. Nothing permanent, just all the stuff you've been copying and it'll make it work a little bit faster. Now I'm gonna hit delete for that. So I wanna show you a quicker way. Command D to deselect. Remember you can find that here, select, deselect. What I can also do is with the move tool is just click on that layer, whether it's a background layer or another layer, drag it, I'm holding my click. I'm dragging it over the tab of where I want it to go. And once that image opens, I've got to drag it down into that image. And now look what I, I have the ability to do. Now I still have to go to edit and transform and resize this, but that saved on clogging up your RAM. But let me show you a better way. I'm gonna shut this down, don't save, don't save. I'm gonna go back to bridge. What I'm gonna do is hold the command or control key and select both of the images that I want. Go up to tools, Go down to Photoshop and let Photoshop do the work for me. Load files into Photoshop layers. That way I've wasted no RAM and it's gonna load everything into the files for me. Now I can, instead of going up to edit and transform and choosing scale, I can just hit Command or Control T for three transform, right? Command minus to fit in screen if I couldn't see my bounding box. And it's gonna automatically hold my aspect ratio. If I hold my shift key, I can make it skinny or stretched but typically you, you want it to stay the way you want it to stay. So I'll, I'll put it something like this. This is similar to the ad that we were trying to make and try to match it to that ad in the sample. Let me take a look at that sample. There we go, right here. Next, I'll go ahead and open that so I can, oh, it, actually it's not gonna let me do anything to accept this. So let me accept that. All right, so there is the rough ad. So I've got a stroke, a drop shadow. Let me go ahead and do that part. So I'm gonna click this to make sure that inset photograph that I just loaded into this file, any of the ways I showed you to do it, I showed you three different ways. I'm gonna go down to FX and I'm gonna choose stroke. It's gonna open up a layer style dialog box with the stroke automatically selected. Now, if I drag the size up, notice it's putting the stroke on the outside, noted by the rounded corners. I don't want that. I want straight corners like a old photograph. So I'm gonna choose inside. It's gonna crop into my photograph. So I don't want that size to be too large, just large enough. I don't want it to be too skinny because that's too skinny. And this is too large, right? So do something that has a nice aesthetic balance. I'd say something like this looks appropriate. Now I want this fill color. I think that white is just too white. So I'm gonna click the color here. It's gonna give me a color picker, but I don't have to choose a color in here. I mean, I can choose red. I can click on blue. I can click on green, I can drag this slider to wherever I want it, but I can also hover outside of the color picker and notice my mouse automatically turn into an eyedropper. And I can say, yeah, 
I want to stay with the color harmony of this tennis ball. Perfect. Click OK. Click OK. Now I have a stroked image. It's like, wait, I forgot to put a drop shadow. Oh, yeah. All you have to do is come back to this effects, which you can turn those effects on and off to look at them. But that's OK. If I want to reopen that layer style dialog box, I just click on the word effects. Can't click once. Got to double click. I'll choose drop shadow. Let's adjust the distance, the size, the opacity. I need to change the angle so I can see it. Do you see it right here? I mean, we can click over here in the image and just pull that shadow wherever you want. Let me look. Okay, the shadows are going this way. I mean, obviously, this has nothing to do with that real life sun, but I'll try to mimic that a little bit. Maybe make the spread and the size a little more, but maybe the opacity should be a little more transparent, kind of like the sample. I'll call that okay. So what did the other one look like? Well, it looks like I'm about this close right? And it's rotated. So let's rotate it. How do we rotate an individual layer? That's a great thing. Remember, I've already changed the individual size of this individual layer. Oh, is this transparent background bothering you? It's bothering me, but we know how to fix it, right? Just hit C for the crop tool. The sound right here? Remember to make ratio is chosen to free transform a crop. And just grab on the bottom and drag up until you've cropped out all those transparent pixels. Click enter, command zero to fit in the screen. We're good to go. Now, while that inset photograph has been selected, you know that you can go to edit and free transform, or you can just hit command or control T, which is a keyboard shortcut. You see the bounding box that automatically activated? I can hover outside and you see how my cursor changes? When you're outside that corner and you get it to change, just click and drag to the side. Maybe it needs to be a little smaller just to kind of align with the other ad. Let me take a look at the other ad. It was at this moment that Jonathan knew he f***ed up. You see, if you click away from one image into another with the free transform not activated or entered, you lose it. So you've got to start all over again. Yeah, that looks about right. Command T, make it a little smaller, hover outside the corner, rotate it. Okay, I'm going to lock it in by hitting enter this time. So when I go back and look at this, okay, I see I have a lot of stuff on the outside here. Now, what else do I need? I need to add text, tennis lessons, with an outside stroke, it looks like. So let's go back to the layer we're working on. You can just come over to the horizontal type tool, click it, click and drag a box, set your type size to 60. Chances are your colors probably either white or black. So I'll just set it to black and I'll type tennis lessons. Okay, that's too small. I'm not gonna be able to read that dark text against that dark background. So let's go ahead and hover over the text size button because right now it only goes up to 72 and I don't know what number is going to work. So this is where I like to just hover over the word and drag left or right to make it bigger. And I'll click the move tool to lock it in. I'll click on that text just to move it around. It's too dark, right? So if I double click on that text icon in the layers panel over here and I come back to the tool options bar at the top, click on that color swatch and I don't need to do it in the color picker. I'm just going to hover with my eyedropper over that stroked image to make sure I get that exact color. Click OK. And this time I'm going to choose the check mark to lock it in. Okay, that's looking good, but I want to stroke on it. So I'm going to come back to this FX choice at the bottom of my layers panel. And I'm going to choose stroke. But I don't want it to stroke with that color. Here I actually do want it to stroke with white. So I'll click on that color icon, choose the white in the upper corner, click OK. I don't want it to be inside because that hides all of my color. So for this instance, I will choose outside. Okay, that looks a little cartoonish. So let's make the size a little lower, something like that. So it's still legible. Click OK, man zero to fit in screen. And what was the other thing? Ah, it's a square. This ad is a square. So let's go crop to a square. We've already learned how to do that. Choose the crop tool, which is right here and go up to ratio and choose one to one square. That way it automatically gets it ready for you and click inside the image and just drag it to where appropriate. I command minus just to get more of my image in the screen. I'm going to click OK. I don't think I'm doing too good. This corner is touching here, which is visually distracting. Let me go look at the one I'm supposed to be matching. Ah, that does have a nicer negative balance feel. I think my inset image is, is bigger too in proportion. Like count your strings. One, two, three, four. Basically, I cropped it to the fifth string. Where did I crop it here? Well, I cropped it in to the fourth string here. So basically I just cropped it too much. So I can hit Command or Control Z to undo that. Click inside the image. Now where's that fifth string? Right there. So that's where it's saying I should crop based on counting the strings. I'll click Enter. So that was the problem. Basically this image was too big. 
can I now resize this image by selecting it, hitting Command or Control T, and making it small? I can't, because when I cropped it, I cut off the edge of that image, which I don't want to do. I've got a Command Z or Control Z to undo that. I've got a Command Z or Control Z to undo this. And actually, I just need to get out of this crop tool, make sure I'm on that image, hit Command or Control T, and make this image just a little smaller. Now I'll hit the crop tool. These are the things that you're going to face. Select inside the image, drag it to that fifth line, because I want you to match it as much as you can. And now you can crop in from the bottom. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to go back to the move tool. I'm going to click on that image because I can move it. And I'm going to move it to about where I think it fits nicest and looks closest to this image. That looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that looks good. Got a little negative space over here. Now I need to save it. So I can go to file, save as. I can save my working files a .psd. After you've done that, you can come back and save it as a JPEG, naming it whatever you want. But remember, you don't have to save these giant files. If you're done working, go to image, image size, change the width to 1920, which is full HD, which is all you'll need for this project. Click OK. Now I'll go save it as a PSD, then save it as a JPEG. The reason you're saving it as a PSD is in case you notice a problem later. Like let's say you you save this. How about we just do it? I'll just come up and click Save As. Now notice it didn't pre-populate with one of the file names because we this is the one where we went to Bridge and told Bridge to load them both together. When it does that, it just it comes up with its own untitled name. I would come up with some sophisticated name here like that so I know exactly what I'm doing. I would save it as a .psd to maintain all my work. Now the reason I did that, remember you can always come back to your most recent image and to save it right here. If you ever want to get rid of these, like they're distracting, all you have to do is go up to File, Open Recent, and come down to Clear Recent File List. But now I do need to go find it. There we go. There's that sophisticated title. I'll double click it because now I can say, oh, you know, I think this should really be moved a little over. And I think that drop shadow is too far over. So I'm going to double click on the drop shadow part and maybe change the distance and the spread. And maybe the opacity should be a little more and click OK, and click Command S, and that's going to save that working PSD, but I still need to edit it for project template, so I still need to go back and resave it as a JPEG. You see how that worked? Boom, OK, all done. Hope that helps. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> oh my god, I did. This is Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.